F47 versus J36. This is the NGAD race, and one side is already flying. China is flight testing its sixth generation aircraft, the J36, right now, while America's F 47 remains behind closed hangar doors. That alone should reset expectations, because the J 36 is not a fighter in the traditional sense. Defense analysts estimate its maximum takeoff weight at over 50 tons, approaching 110,000 to 115,000 pounds. Weight class of Cold War bombers. So large that multiple analysts have described the J 36 as an airborne battleship designed not just to engage aircraft, but also U.S. carrier strike groups. And then there's the J-36 design that shocks aerospace engineers. The J-36 uses three engines, a trijet. What kind of mission China has planned for J-36 that demands that much thrust, that much electrical power, that much endurance? Especially when analysts believe the J-36 may be experimenting with smart electromagnetic surfaces, aircraft skin capable of harvesting ambient electromagnetic energy to power advanced sensors, electronic warfare systems, and potentially high-energy laser weapons. This isn't speculation pulled from thin air. China built an entire restricted test complex near the Lop Nuer nuclear site, often compared to a Chinese Area 51, specifically to conceal large, unconventional aircraft programs like the J-36. Now contrast that with America's answer. The F-47 is being built on technologies DARPA has been quietly developing for more than a decade, secretly. Adaptive smart engine that cheats physics shifting gears mid-air, morphing from the fuel economy of a commuter into terrifying power of a rocket at the flip of a switch. AI-driven sensor fusion, autonomous teaming. A single F-47 is expected to act as a quarterback, coordinating hundreds, potentially over a thousand, autonomous combat drones, while operating at a combat radius of over 1,000 nautical miles, nearly double the reach of the F-22. Its engines are expected to run at temperatures exceeding 2,200 degrees Celsius, unlocking extreme performance and electrical power. Enough power that analysts have openly discussed a future where the F-47 could operate at near-space altitudes, engaging satellites and high-value assets with directed energy systems. And this race isn't happening in isolation. Russia claims its sixth-generation interceptor, the MiG-41, could reach Mach 5 and operate between the tropopause and stratopause. Every major power in the world is racing toward sixth-generation air dominance the global sixth generation race. Right now, the label sixth generation is being applied across the world, but it hides more than it reveals. The United States is pursuing F-47 NGAD as a network first system built around autonomy and decision dominance. China is building J-36 and J-50, large long range platforms designed to control space and deny access. The UK, Italy, and Japan, through the GCAP Tempest program, are betting on extreme pilot machine integration and wearable interfaces. France, Germany, and Spain, through FCAS, are building a multinational combat cloud where aircraft act as nodes rather than individuals. Russia's MiG-41 concept emphasizes raw speed and altitude, designed to intercept threats before they ever reach defended airspace. India's AMCA Mark II focuses on building indigenous capability step by step, prioritizing self-reliance and gradual growth. Everyone is racing toward sixth generation, but they are racing toward different definitions of victory. What In God really is, and why it changes everything. In God, next generation air dominance, is not a single aircraft. It is a combat ecosystem. A crewed aircraft sits at the center, but it does not fight alone. Autonomous combat aircraft operate ahead, to the sides, and deep inside contested airspace. Sensors live on drones, satellites, ships, and ground nodes. Data is fused in real time. Artificial intelligence filters, prioritizes, and recommends actions before a human ever touches the controls. The aircraft is no longer the weapon. The network is. And that realization explains why the F-47 and J-36 look so radially different. Design philosophy equals national strategy. The F-47, developed by Boeing as the successor to the F-22, reflects how the United States expects to survive and win future conflicts. Not by concentrating power in a few massive platforms, but by distributing capability across many survivable nodes. The F-47 is designed for penetrating counter-air, operating inside the densest air defense environments on Earth, while acting as a quarterback for autonomous teammates. It doesn't need to see everything itself. It doesn't need to carry every weapon. 
It needs to connect the entire battle space. That's why the F-47 emphasizes all aspect broadband stealth, adaptive cycle engines, predictive maintenance, and compatibility with agile combat employment, operating from short, austere, even improvised runways across vast regions. The J-36 reflects a different calculation. Its size, range, internal volume, and crew configuration suggest a platform designed for endurance and control, not constant maneuver. The side-by-side -side cockpit points toward a battle management role. The massive internal bays support very large missiles. The trijet configuration provides electrical power far beyond what typical fighters require. Rather than distributing capability outward, the J-36 pulls capability inward. It is built to command regions, not just survive within them. First, direct comparison. Stealth versus presence. The F-47's stealth philosophy is about time. Time spent unseen. Time spent inside defended airspace. Time spent making decisions before the adversary realizes a fight has started. Its shaping, materials, and electronic warfare systems are optimized to reduce detectability across multiple radar bands, not just fire control radar. The J-36 uses stealth shaping as well, particularly its tailless flying wing planform. But physics still applies. Size creates challenges. So the J-36 trades extreme stealth for distance, endurance, and layered protection. It is designed to fight from far enough away that fewer systems can reach it. Two approaches, two interpretations of survivability. Sensors, data, and who actually controls the fight. In the F-47's ecosystem, sensors are distributed. Autonomous aircraft push information forward. Other platforms fill gaps. AI fuses the picture before it ever reaches the pilot. The pilot's job is not stick and rudder flying. It is decision authority. The J-36 appears to centralize that function. Large onboard radar arrays, multiple sensor apertures, a second crew member dedicated to managing information, jamming, and coordination. One approach prioritizes speed of cognition. The other prioritizes depth of awareness. And that difference will shape how future air battles unfold. Range, payload, and the real meaning of power. At first glance, the J-36 looks like it wins the range and payload conversation. It's enormous. Analysts estimate internal fuel loads approaching 15 tons, giving the J-36 an estimated combat radius of 1,500 to 1,600 nautical miles. That kind of reach allows it to loiter far from the fight while still influencing it, especially over the Western Pacific. Its massive internal weapons bays are believed to be sized for very long-range air-to-air missiles, heavy anti-ship weapons, and future payloads that simply won't fit inside smaller fighters. The F-47 takes a different path. Its confirmed combat radius of over 1,000 nautical miles already represents a near doubling of the F-22's reach. But range is only part of the story, because in the NDAD ecosystem, the F-47 doesn't carry all the weapons. Autonomous combat aircraft act as forward magazines. Other platforms extend sensing and strike options. The F-47's power lies in allection, not volume. One aircraft concentrates mass. The other distributes it intelligently. Power generation. Why the engines matter. Sixth generation aircraft are no longer limited by thrust alone. They're limited by electrical power. Sensors, electronic warfare systems, data fusion, AI processors, and directed energy weapons all compete for electricity. This is where the J-36's trijet configuration begins to make sense. Three engines mean more total shaft power, greater electrical generation, redundancy for long-duration missions. If China is serious about fielding onboard laser defenses or offensive energy weapons, the J-36's engine choice supports that ambition. The F-47 approaches the same problem differently. Its adaptive cycle engines are designed to dynamically shift between high thrust and high efficiency modes, but more importantly, to act as power plants as much as propulsion systems. Running at temperatures exceeding 2,200 degrees Celsius, these engines are expected to provide enormous electrical output while remaining fuel efficient at cruise. Two different solutions to the same problem. One adds engines, the other adds intelligence and efficiency. Human workload. Who's actually flying the aircraft? The cockpit tells you a lot about how an aircraft is meant to fight. The J-36's side-by-side -side cockpit strongly suggests task separation. One crew member flies, the other manages sensors, electronic warfare, and coordination. This mirrors how large strike aircraft and command platforms operate today. The F-47 takes a more radical approach. 
It assumes that AI will absorb most of the cognitive load. Instead of adding a second human, the F-47 adds machine intelligence, filtering information, highlighting threats, and recommending actions before the pilot ever sees raw data. The pilot's role shifts from operator to decision authority. Less workload, faster reaction time, more trust in the system. That design choice only works if the software is reliable. Which brings us to timelines. Timelines. Who arrives first and who arrives ready? China's advantage right now is visibility. The J-36 is already flying. Multiple prototypes have been observed, suggesting an aggressive test campaign. Analysts expect initial operational capability around 2030, possibly earlier for limited roles. The F-47 follows a quieter path. Boeing received the core contract in 2025. Manufacturing infrastructure is already underway. First flight is expected late this decade, with operational capability in the early 2030s. On paper, China arrives first. Historically, the United States arrives integrated, with training, sustainment, networking, and doctrine aligned from day one. Speed matters, but readiness matters more. Why the U.S. approach scales Here's the quiet advantage in the American approach. The F-47 doesn't need to be perfect on day one, because capability is offloaded to the network. New drones can be added, new sensors can be integrated, AI models can be updated, weapons can evolve without redesigning the aircraft. Digital engineering and digital twin maintenance mean each aircraft continuously improves through software and data. China's approach produces powerful platforms. America's approach produces adaptable systems. Over decades, adaptability compounds. Closing the loop, what this race actually decides. The race between the F-47 and the J-36 is not about who builds the biggest aircraft, the fastest jet, or the longest range missile. It's about how air power is organized. One vision concentrates power into dominant platforms. The other distributes power across intelligent networks. Both are formidable, but only one is designed to scale across generations. The aircraft that wins this race won't just control the skies of the 2030s. It will define how air dominance works for the next half century. And that's why the F-47 versus J-36 comparison matters far beyond two airplanes.